predicting solubility. And we're going to look a little more about predicting solubility um, in, in an upcoming chapter uh, where we will be looking at the guidelines to solubility. But for now, we're just going to look at the following. We're going to use differences in electronegativities to determine ionic nature of the compounds to help predict solubility. Now, predicting solubility is not as cut and dry as it is. You know, if it's this, it's that, whatever. You know, so we're going to be using the guidelines and, and I will be providing you guys the guidelines. But there are a few things that I, I hope you remember in terms of solubility and know that if you see these certain compounds, they will always uh, be soluble regardless. Now, if the elements are polar or ionic, then the compound will probably dissolve in water. Okay, so it's in terms of solubility, we know something is, is polar, right? Water, also polar. So if it's polar, it will dissolve in water. Ionic will dissolve in water, most of them, right? Example of an ionic, as we said, sodium chloride will dissolve in water. If the elements are nonpolar, then the compound will probably not dissolve in water. Example of something that's nonpolar, right? Something like uh, CH4, methane, right? Here, CH, oops. So C, single bonded to H's. If you look at the electronegativity, you're going to notice that they're nonpolar which means neither the C or the H is slightly positive or slightly negative, which means they will not dissolve within the water. Solubility of covalent compounds. Covalent compounds do not have dipole charges. They are not soluble in water. Exceptions are methanol, ethanol, and sugars. They're able to form hydrogen bonds with water, which allows them to behave similar to ionic compounds. Okay, they have certain ends that, are, that have the ability to interact with, with water molecules and allow them to, uh, to dissolve. When a molecule com molecular compound such as sugar or methanol dissolves in water, the solid breaks up into molecules which are coordinated by the water. Notice that the molecules remain intact even though they are dissolved in water. No ions are produced from the dissociation of a covalent compound. So if we look at the breakdown of, let's say, you know, a whole chain of, of uh, glucose molecules. Right? So here we have our ring of glucose. And it will remain the same. It, it will not break apart. So then, like this piece isn't going to break apart, and this piece, you know, and this piece is gonna, it's going to remain intact as a, as a full pure substance. It's going to stay together as, a, as, a, you know, as, a, as an entity of its own, right, and as its full molecule. Okay, and so here's that example, right? This is not going to break apart. So what's going to happen is it's got these ends here, right, that will, let's say, be able to dissolve with others, right, and, and they do carry, um, you know, so if we look at this OH and we know the electronegativity, there's going to be a slightly negative, slightly positive um, attraction, let's say, with the OH. So the O and the H are, are, are bonded covalently, right? But if we look at electronegativity between the oxygen and the hydrogen bond, right, the oxygen is slightly negative, hydrogen is slightly positive. And this is what allows something like this covalent compound to be able to dissolve in water. Insoluble covalent compounds. They lack ions or polar bonds, therefore are unable to dissolve in polar sub substances or solvents. Sol solvent, sorry. <laughs> They're able to dissolve in nonpolar solvents. Remember what we talked about way back when? Polar dissolves in polar solute solvents. Right? So polar polar solute in a polar solvent. Nonpolar solute in a nonpolar solvent. Right? They don't mix and match, right? Like dissolves like. If a compound possesses both polar and nonpolar components, it may dissolve in both types of solvents. Okay. Here we have acetic acid able to form hydrogen bonds with water, and the CH3 end is considered nonpolar. So it's got your nonpolar entity to it, but it also has your polar aspect of it. So because it has the polar, it still is able to dissolve in a polar solvent such as water. 
So let's look at a few examples. Nonpolar solutes. Okay, iodine, hydrogen, oxygen, methane. Okay, these are considered nonpolar solutes. They will not dissolve in water. A few examples of polar solutes. Ammonia, ethanol, hydrochloric acid. Okay, these all have slightly positive, slightly negative ends that will allow for their interaction with the slightly negative oxygen, the slightly negative positive hydrogen. Nonpolar solvents. Okay, so these are nonpolar solvents. So we've got carbon tetrachloride, benzene. Okay, so these are things that, well, none of these solutes, these solutes will not be able to dissolve within these, right? Because remember, polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents. Nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. So these can dissolve in these but not these.